Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I'm going to introduce you to a brand new type added in .NET 8 that makes searching for matches into a dataset extremely efficient both in speed and memory. In fact, it is the fastest thing you can use right now for this specific use case. And Microsoft is using it extensively in both .NET and ASP.NET Core to make them way, way faster. Now, even though the use case for this is fairly narrow, there are many, many things actually you can adapt it into to greatly improve your performance. This is something that completely changed the game when it comes to this specific use case. And I think everybody should know that this is the thing that .NET now supports. In this video, I'm going to explain what it is and how it works. And we're also gonna compare it with some other versions of searching for values into a dataset. If you like our content and you wanna see more, make sure you subscribe. For more training, check out my courses on domtrain.com. All right, so let me show what I have here. I have a similar console application running in .NET 8. And what I'm going to do is explain the example I'm going to be tackling here. And the use case I want to focus on in this particular example is trying to check whether a string we have is a valid base64 string, meaning it only consists of base64 characters. It doesn't have to be encodable or decodable. All we care about is do you support the 64 characters of a base64 string? Now, just as a recap, these are the characters supported on base64 from A to Z, all capitals, and then from A to Z lowercase, and then all the numbers from zero to nine, and then plus, slash, and also the padding character, the equals character. And that is it. So what I wanna do here is say that I have some example text, and let's say that the text is this, is this a valid base 64 string? In this case it is because it only has characters that are included in this array, and they are all base 64 characters. If we had, for example, the hat, character or dollar sign, those are not supported. So this should not be a base64 string. Now, a very quick and dirty approach of implementing this would look something like this. We would have a is base64 a method, and then we would take this input over here, and I can say console.writeline and print out the is base64. And if I do that and I run this application, then I'm going to get false in this use case because we have these characters that are not supported. And all I'm really doing is I'm just iterating over the string because strings can be iterated because they're a collection of characters. And in fact, I could use if I want to a for each loop as well, or even turn it into link, but I'm not going to go into link because performance characteristics change with link. And if I didn't have these bad characters and I had something like this, for example, then this would be a perfectly valid base64 string. It's not decodable, but that doesn't matter. It still consists of base64 characters. Now, if you wanted to go a step further, you could actually improve this quite a bit. In fact, I could use spans <laughs> to do the following, say that is base64 span, and then return the example text as span, and span as a read-only span of characters allows me to do the following. I can say index of any except, or I can say contains any except, but index of any except the parameters in this array over here. And then if that is minus one, then it is base64, meaning there was no match. So if I use that over here, as you're going to see very quickly, it does return true. But if I go over here and I add some parameters or some characters that are not by 64 characters, I'm going to get false. So this will be both more efficient and faster. And you can write this in so many ways. For example, you can say contains any except, meaning you don't even have to have the minus one check. But those are just a few of the approaches you can follow. Now, all that is fine and it's functional and it's very fast, but something that completely changed the performance game was added in .NET 8. Now, before that, real quick, I'd like to let you know that our Black Friday discount on DomeTrain.com is now live. You have until the 27th of November to use this Discount code Black Friday 23 to get 40% off any of the courses and 20% off any of the already discounted bundles. So this is your once a year opportunity to invest in your learning and learn anything you need to thrive as a .NET developer from unit testing, integration testing. We have clean architecture, DDD. Check out our courses, link down below, use code Black Friday 2023. And two things, our EF core is not included because it just launched, so that just gets 20%. And the code will only last for 500 purchases per course, so you might want to hurry. This discount has actually been in early access for some days now to my Patreons and our mail list, so make sure you subscribe to our mail list as well if you're gonna get these early accesses to discount codes. Now back to the video. Okay, so what was added? Well, I'm going to, instead of use an array over here of characters, I'm gonna just have a string representation of the characters. So I'm just gonna say base64 characters is just 
this string over here. Nothing changes with the two approaches other than the thing that we're going to use has an overload to accept a string, which simplifies how to deal with this because then it means I can actually have a constant string and that comes with its own benefit. So what's the thing that was added? Well, what was added is a new type called search values. And I'm going to use search values of characters. Now you can have search values of characters or search values of bytes, which makes the use case a bit more limited. But since you have characters and bytes, you can use it in tons of places. And this is one of them. So I can say base64 search vals over here and say search values dot create to create my search values and then I'm going to pass down the string I want to create the values based on and of course I could use a character array as well if I wanted to that doesn't change there is an overload to accept a read-only span of characters which means that both the character array and the string have implicit converters to convert it to what should be accepted here it is just that you can actually optimize further if you use the string and now I have this base64 search values of t type characters which I can use here and I can say let me just change this to is base64 without any subtitle and then say return example text dot same thing as before i'm still gonna use it as a span but i can now say index of any except and pass the search values and i can do the same thing as if this is minus one then there was no match meaning it is base 64. so if i do this the api doesn't change as you can see but we now are accepting search values of type t not a read only span then if i use this as you can see over here i get false because i have the little hat character but if i remove it and i run it i'm going to get true so your code is very much the same the only thing that changes is that you can now use this constant string to represent your characters and pass them down into the search values and you want these search values to be cached once for your application so you want to say static read only and just store them somewhere and then reuse that value everywhere. This will become way more clearer when we move this into the benchmarks. And before I show you the benchmarks, I want to show you that Microsoft is using this quite a bit to match HTTP characters, to use the HTTP rule parser, to parse the whole string, to deal with headers, path string, things that are used extensively in hot paths in ASP.NET Core will use this as much as possible. And in fact, if I go into the runtime itself, not just ASP.NET Core, you're going to see that this is in many, 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 many places. In fact, they're using it for a very similar use case to match ASCII letters and I'm pretty sure they're using it for base64 as well. But how much faster is it? Well, let's take a look at some benchmarks. Okay, so what I did is I brought in benchmark.net over here. And by the way, if you want the code, you can get it from the description down below. I brought in the benchmarks where I have this constant string. I have the same array over here. I'm using a static read-only field to cache the search values because the magic of this is inside this create method of search values. That's where all the paths of actually optimizing searching for values in that set are in here so you really want to call this create method just once for your search values and reuse it everywhere and then i have two strings one being a valid base 64 string and the other one being an invalid base 64 string and the invalid character is very intentionally in the middle to show you how this value would scale in fact thinking about this i should probably also have a third value which shows you scaling as well which will include just this value but many times, let's say five times, why not? And let's see how that compares. And then I'm using the set values approach as you saw over here in the example before. Then the span approach, which will still be very, very optimized, but it's not using search values. It's just using the array directly. And then the naive version where I'm just looping around the characters and checking if it is contained or not. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back here, say return early over here, and then benchmark runner dot run benchmarks and make sure that this is in the release mode. And I'm going to go ahead and say, run my benchmarks and let's wait and see what we get back. All right, so results are back and let's see what we have here. So as you can see, the EastBase64 search values, 1.8 nanoseconds and then 1.6 for the one that doesn't contain the parameter and then 2.5 for the one that doesn't contain the parameter, but is 55 characters long. Now look how that compares to everything else of course we have no more allocation everything is very optimized but we have 15 nanoseconds for the one that does match it in the middle and then 
32 for the naive approach, then 26 for the one that doesn't include it, and 50 for the naive approach, and then 49 and 253. So you can see that the scaling of search values is insane. It is so, so fast that nothing even comes close. Even the very optimized read-only span version can't compete because of that search values.create method. That method will go ahead and optimize for so many use cases and so many paths, and Microsoft will actually keep adding things behind the scenes, as Steven Top has already talked about, to optimize these search paths even further. And if we go into that create method, you will see that search values is very optimized to the point where it takes into account the length of the values themselves. If it is one, then we do this. If it is two, then we do this. If it is three, this. And then if it is more, we optimize for further, for four, five, and so on. Then it's vectorizing as well, if they can with hardware acceleration and so on. So as you can see, this is an insanely small type, but extremely efficient, which if you have a use case for, you really should be using. This is something I will be using quite a bit, but I really want to know your thoughts in the comments down below. What do you think about this? And what's a cool use case that you might have for something like this? Let us know so we can all learn. Well, that's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, keep coding.